56-1207 Gifts, Brooklyn, New York, USA. May be seated, if you will, just a moment. Good evening, friends. I'm happy to be here tonight to greet you again in the name of our lovely risen Lord, who is in glory of his resurrection and is present tonight to bless us. So happy to be here and to have this privilege. My son just have said a few moments ago while standing in the room while you we were waiting to come in, when I started singing Only Believe, he looked around at me and was praying. I looked up and he said, Daddy, how many times that called you to the platform? Thousands across the world in all different kind of languages. I heard the natives of Africa with about 16 different vocabularies calling it, all singing Only Believe at once. And had the treat keep them fenced off on account of tribal wars, and yet they all sang together Only Believe. And what a wonderful, I said, yes, some glorious day. If I go before Jesus comes, and when they are putting me down in the ground, they're going to sing Only Believe. If you see it in the newspaper or something, another hit on the radio, or whatever somebody tells you, just stop a minute and think of that song Only Believe. Because I believe that someday I'll come out of there just as sure as I go in. Someone said not long ago, said to me, said Brother Branham, I'd like to talk to you about an insurance policy. Now, insurance is fine. I have nothing against it. But I don't carry any of this kind of insurance. And so the agent seemed to think that I'm a little off about it. But maybe I am. But I was mistreated. My father was a one time by an insurance company. He sold a 20 year endowment, was supposed to pay off so much at a certain time. When it came time, it was supposed to be worth $500. And uh, he misread it. It was a dollar and 50 cents total and I just never taken any insurance. So then, see how my old dad had to work for that, and then be like that. My brother and I, and um, I said, a friend of mine said, why Billy? I just want to sell you some insurance. I said, oh Wilma, I don't want it. I said, I've got insurance. Oh, he said, you have? I said, yeah, I got insurance. And he said, uh, my wife looked down at me as if I was to think, are you storing? And I said, no, I have insurance. And he said, what kind of insurance do you have, Billy? I said, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. And so he said, well, that's all right, Billy, but that won't put you in a graveyard. I said, it'll take me out. That's the thing I want. I'm not worried about it getting in there. It's getting out. So I'd rather have one that'll take me in there instead or take me out of here instead of one to put me in there. The blessed assurance of Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. A heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit and washed in his blood. What a beautiful thing that is. Well, now tonight, I promise by the grace of God, I'm to let you out early. I am, you know. I don't preach by notes. I don't premeditate anything you're going to see. And it's just inspiration. And just as I feel, I just say it. And as long as it keeps coming, I just keep talking. So I just don't know. I just don't know any better. And so I ought to have mercy on those that are going to work, though, doing things. My brothers and sisters, I certainly feel ashamed of keeping you that long. And I don't mean to do it. But I just love you. And I think you're a very fine listening audience. And it's a pleasure for any minister to preach to an audience like we have had here each night. And I appreciate that. And I'm not saying that complimentary. I'm just saying that because it's a truth. And if it wasn't the truth, then I wouldn't say nothing at all. So just go ahead. But think, yeah, I think rather you give a little rosebud now than a whole wreath after you're dead. You see? So it's best to do it right now. And it's been a pleasure. I've been a little nervous because since I've been up here and I haven't been able to carry my text and so forth and to minister like I should, I've said something. My meetings have always been a low ebb for a long time. I've seen it. So I asked the father to help me. And I've seen the dropping down in my mail drop from 1,500 letters a day down to about 15 letters a day because no one could put their finger on me. I was gone somewhere and waiting till the Lord told me for a move before it ever moved. And it wasn't an act of faith then. It was just simply just waiting, waiting, waiting. And the Lord kindly checked me up on that. So I purpose it in my heart. Then if he would help me that I was going to be different and just as you start to 
do something for God, then I expect all the guns of hell to turn right on you, see? And I got poisoned the other night, and I almost slipped out of life. I've been real weak and nervous since I've been here. But you, the Lord, has been good to me. I feel better and kindly coming out of it now. I've just been eating soft food or something because it's a set all through. I was just poisoned, broke out all of my body and everything. And I just trusted him and he seen me through. And I desire prayers that he will continue. Not that I deserve to live, but because of the gospel alone is what I want to live for. And that's when that time comes. I want to try to do everything that I can and put all my life in and from henceforth i bypass brethren and my secretary called me and he said billy it's not fair to the people he said you got a ministry he has 400 major cities in america calling you right now right here on my desk and i said besides pretty near every nation under the heavens is calling and here you are asleep in and asleep out and turn from this one and that one just to make arrangements and just be passed around. Nobody knows where to catch you, see. You're out in the woods or down somewhere or gone here, something like that. But won't you settle yourself down and go on? So I prayed over it and the Lord let me know that that was right. So I started right off and I pray that God will help me, give me strength and I'm depending on you all for your prayers for me. Now, here are some handkerchiefs here to be prayed over and tonight I tried to preach in, if I could, just for a little bit, just a little text to talk to you, to get you acquainted with my ministry. Tomorrow morning is a Christian businessman breakfast and I think ministers' wives and what more is invited. Anybody that wants to come is invited and I, many of you brethren, perhaps are members of this fine organization of the Christian businessmen. They have been very kind to me. I spoke for them everywhere and they have been very kind. Dimo Shakarian, the president, my Angam Bright Vice President and many of the others and Tommy Nicholson as editor of the paper and I'm always happy to get to help them because it's in the line. Myself, when I was a Baptist and coming to you for gospel people, the first thing each domination wanted to come and join their rank. I wouldn't do that because if you do, what little influence I have, it throws it to one domination. I've tried to stand right in the bridge and say, we are brethren. All we are brethren. And I to see I needed effort for all churches for the Lord Jesus Christ. And now that's my motive is to keep that that way and just stand in the bridge and don't join any certain domination. Just stay in between so we can be brothers and not have any different feelings and say, well, now he's a Presbyterian or he's a Baptist or Pentecostal. I'm just your brother, that's all. And so yeah, denominations are fine. They're dandy. I love them, everyone. But they're not what takes you to heaven. Christ is what takes you to heaven, your faith in Christ. So now on these handkerchiefs, the greatest ministry that the Lord has given me almost is on handkerchiefs. So oh, I could spend hours just on telling about it. And we send out thousands of those a month all over the world. And I'm glad to see that you believe the Bible. A lot of people pour, many people rather pour oil on them and anoint them. That's all right. That's fine. Whatever the Lord will bless, I'm for it. But if you watch in the scripture, it wasn't that they, Paul anointed them, they taken from his body, Acts 19, handkerchiefs and aprons. Now you believe, you know, I believe Paul was a fundamentalist. I believe he was a very scriptural on what he done. You know, I think he got that out. I think when God, that out of the scripture where Elijah, when the Shunammite woman came to him and asked about her baby, Elijah told Gehazi to take his staff and go lay it on the baby. For Elijah knew what he touched was blessed. If the woman would just believe it the same way. So I think that's where Paul got his scripture for taking handkerchiefs and aprons from his body. However, these are some handkerchiefs that represent sick people. Before we go any further, let's ask the Lord to bless these in their effort. Thank you, brother. Now, our kind Heavenly Father, it's a privilege tonight to call you Father, to know that Father is ownership, and we love thee because thou does own us, and we are not our own, for we have been bought by a price, the price of the blood of the Lord Jesus. And in that, we trust that we 
thank thee for this Christian land where the doors are still open and the gospel can be preached in a freedom of speech and thought. And we thank thee for that. And now tonight, these people have a right to bring these handkerchiefs as tokens of their faith way out across the land. Maybe some old dad in a little apartment blind tonight. These handkerchiefs is going to him. Some mother taking it to her baby that's raging with a fever. We don't know where they go, Father, but thou does. And I pray that you'll bless them, bless the people that's part of them. And now we are taught in the scripture that one day when Israel had been cornered, they were trying to follow God, the great pillar of fire that led them down to the river. And there they was with their leader, Moses. And they were cornered, the mountains, the sea, and Pharaoh's army coming, pursuing them. They were trapped. Nature trembled. Oh, what a sin. But it's at that time that God likes to come on the scene. The writer said he looked down through the pillar of fire with angry eyes at the Red Sea, because it was cutting off the people from that promised land. And the sea got scared, and it moved back. And the children of God passed on through the bed on it, on dry land towards the promised land. Father God, tonight, as we send these handkerchiefs, is a token of our faith in the finished work of Christ at Calvary. And we thank Thee that we have this faith, and the people has faith. And now, when they are laid upon the sick bodies, and they reach a destination where they are going, we pray that you look down through the blood of the Lord Jesus and may the disease get scared that's in the body. When they see this token, and may the people be liberated and taken on to the promise that God has said in his word, above all things I would that would prosper in health. Grant it, Father, for that's the purpose we send them for. In the name of the beloved child, the Lord Jesus, we ask it. Amen. In the reading of the blessed word of the Lord Jesus tonight, I just love to read his word and Sunday afternoon I have a special message if the Lord permits. It's A, I want to speak Sunday afternoon over at the Music Academy on why doesn't people keep the Holy Spirit? See, what happened? And why don't they receive it? And what kind of a time do they have receiving it? And bring out your unsaved ones for Sunday afternoon. It will be a regular gospel message for Sunday afternoon, then Sunday night, the closing of this part of the campaign, I think by the Hunchkings is going on. And now, ministering brethren, you that's here, and you in your, if you will, I am hoping someday to return. Now, but the Hatchkins, the reason I'm here in this one church is because uh, Brother Hatchkins is a bosom friend of mine, and he tried for years to get me to come here. And I come, not because that I'm pushing someone else off, but just for love for Brother Hatchkins. And I hope that someday you, my brethren, and you, the people of the churches, that your pastor may not could be here tonight at or any time, give them my love and regards and let them know that someday I hope to return in a great union meeting where we can have, this is just the introduction. And on Sunday, if you will, brethren, announce it in your church a Sunday afternoon. So usually we close our service on Sunday night and so that the church can go back when to the places in the big campaign. But this Sunday afternoon, if you don't have a program, bring your sinner friends and bring them out to the meeting, if you will. I'd be very glad for you to come. We'll do all we can to lead them to Christ now. And tomorrow morning's breakfast, all of you come because I want to introduce to the businessmen a little of the drama that leans towards the meeting in Christ. I want you to, or Christ in the meeting rather, and now if you can, come. Now in the book of St. Matthew, the 24th verse of the 12th chapter, I wish to read this for a way of text. And the queen of the south shall rise up in the day of the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. And may the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Now, how many loves the word? Do you love it with all of your heart? Oh, that's where our faith is anchored, in the word of God. And our faith has no other stable anchored place but in the word of the Lord. And I'm so glad. See, you can't be. Faith can't have a resting place on the imaginary minds of man. Self-made theology is got to have its resting place in the eternal rock of God's word. There it's anchored because God said so. He said, heavens and earth will pass away, but my words shall never fail. So we can be assured that his word never fails. Now, we're going to speak about gifts tonight. And that's the reason I took tonight and two for this purpose that we could kindly explain and take my time, watching the clock and take my time and explain to you 
what I think gifts are. Now, the first place, the Bible said that gifts and callings are without repentance. It's something that God, by sovereign grace, puts into the church. See, God does it himself. It's a work and an act of God by foreknowledge. He predestinates these things to happen. Now, as I say, God is not willing that anyone should perish. But in the very beginning, God knew who would be saved and who would perish. For knowledge, let him know that if he is an infinite God, why? He certainly cannot. He is not willing that any should perish. But he knew from the beginning, he knew every fly, every flea, every person that would ever be on the earth. He knew them before the foundation of the world, because it is infinite. And we know that he is omnipresent, that he is everywhere. He covers all space. He is omniscient. He is all wisdom. He is omnipotent. He is all power. And that's the kind of a God that we serve. It's not some pagan idol. It is a living, resurrected Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, which is a spirit of the Lord Jesus that covered the whole earth. And he could be everywhere. He knows all things. He's got all wisdom and all power. What a wonderful God. And to know that's not, it's not just a makeup. It's just not somebody's theology. But he lives with us, shows himself, and proves himself alive. Oh, should we not be the most happy people in the world? Our hearts should be racing swiftly. And traveling around the, over the world and seeing the different nations with their gods and their idols and so forth and all their philosophies and then know that they are all foolishness. There is not a one of them. Their founders are dead and the grave and gone. And only one that can prove that their leader lives and reigns now will call your hand if you you tell them you got that you can have joy they have joy too you say you can shout you have to see them shout you say uh, can you say how happy you are you ought to see how happy they are but our jesus comes on the scene and does the same things that he did when he was here before so that proves that he lives he's not dead he's alive forevermore and don't be afraid he's no matter how many atomic bombs they have how many hydrogen bombs and how much they speak of this and this is going to happen don't be scared god's at the wheel he knows just how to steer he knows just how it's coming out so we don't have one thing to fear but be just a lovely little careful child who's looking up to father every minute and depending on him to lead us guide us and to take us into our destination by his grace and by loving him that way you wouldn't do nothing to harm him why if you do anything to harm him or all through the night your hot tears will run down your cheeks in repentance because you wouldn't hurt father for nothing would you you wouldn't hurt your little baby. You'd hate to do that. You'd hate to hurt the feelings of your wife or your husband. How much more your Lord and Savior would you if you love him? If you loved your wife, you wouldn't hurt her. If you loved your children, you wouldn't want to do anything wrong to them. And how about your Heavenly Father? So you see, though I speak the tongues of men and angels, and they have all knowledge and all wisdom, though I have faith to move mountains and have not love, I am nothing, see? Where these tongues they shall cease, and where this prophecy shall vanish, and knowledge shall vanish, and prophecy shall fail, and all these things. But when that which is perfect is come, it endures forever. Dear dying lamb, the precious blood shall never lose its power. Till all the ransom church of God be saved to sin no more. See, ever since by faith I saw that stream, thy flowing wounds supplied, redeeming love has been my theme, and shall be shall I die. That's my theme is love. Love works fear. Law is negative. Works is negative, but love is positive. See, it's absolutely positive. You can trust anybody when they love you, not because they fear you, but because they love you. And that's how I trust him, because I know he loves me. And it's a love affair and not a works affair of fear. And if there's no if to it, God's done it, and that settles it. So I love him for it. Now, gifts and callings are without repentance. God, all through the ages, has been represented on the earth through his prophets, through his kings, and it's always been the Spirit of God. If we had the time tonight to go down, like to Joseph, and dig out those nuggets and polish them up, I love a metapologist. And I love to get the old types, not having education, then I have to go to type because type 
oh, if I saw that type, if I was watching at my shadow, and I never seen myself, and I see what my shadow looked like, I'd have some idea of what I would look like. And that's what all the Old Testament was a shadow of the New Testament to come. And if I see how God dealt with men there, I see how God will deal with men over here. I see what kind of a recompense or reward for disobedience, I know what it will be over here. So all the old things was a shadow of the new to come. And how we look, we love to go back in the Old Testament and dig up those old nuggets, prospect, you know, dig them out, polish them up, look at them, and even of them will point to Calvary. The finished work, everything of the Old Testament will point to the finished work of the Lord Jesus at Calvary. How Joseph was a perfect type of Christ, how Moses was a perfect type of Christ, Moses the lawgiver, the priest, how that Joseph was a prince of, of uh, prosperity, everything he did prospered. When he was here on the earth, put him in the dungeon, everything prospered, put him in the Pharaoh's place, everything prospered. Wherever he went, he was a prince of prosperity. And when he comes again in his glory, the desert shall blossom as a rose and will have no more deserts and everything will prosper in the great millennium when the prince of prosperity arrives. How wonderful. Notice how that Joseph was loved of his father, hated of his brethren, sold for almost 30 pieces of silver, thrown into a pit to be dead, taken up and set at the right hand of the greatest commercial city in the world. No man could come to Pharaoh only through Joseph. Jesus sold for 30 pieces of silver by his brethren and was taken up, sitting at the right hand of God. And no man can come to the Father except by the Son. And when Joseph went forth, there's a proclamation signed, brothers went before saying, bow the knee, Joseph is coming. Oh, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether you do it now or your works go on before you, whatever it is, someday you've got to bow the knee to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Notice it, how beautiful, how that in the law, the lawgiver, how that he was both a priest and a lawgiver, and how he led the people. That was God in Joseph. That was God in Moses. Look at David when he was dethroned and rejected in his city, and he climbed out up the Mount of Olives and rejected by his own son, and his people turned him down. And as he went up the hill, he went up weeping, looking back over Jerusalem, weeping. What was it? It was the Spirit of Christ in him. When the son of David came, some 800 years later, he sat on the same hill, rejected of his own, and wept over Jerusalem and said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how oft would I have hovered you as a hen covers her cheeks, and you would not. All the Old Testament, just a foreshadow of the New Testament, the things to come. Someone was speaking, I was in Africa not long ago, and they have a very funny thing. It's a thing in America, even in baptism. They baptize three different times. One group of them baptizes them three times forward, and another one baptizes them three times backwards, and one they baptize one for the Father, and one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. And when they do it, they simply bring their creed into a pagan creed. There's no such a thing, see? So then when they then that upsets the Jew. He says, which one of them is your God? Is God the Father your God, or is God the Son, or is God the Holy Ghost? Anyone that knows God and knows his Bible knows that those three are one. Not three gods, one God manifested in three persons. In other ways, so that the one maybe who doesn't understand too well would know it's three offices of the same, same God. God the Father is in the form of a light. No man can touch him. He's come right down, condescending, and come into the sun. It was God, the Son, the same God. My Father's in me. It's him that doeth the works. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. I came from God, said Christ, and I go back to God. He did. It's God all along, only three offices. The Fatherhood, the Sonship, the Holy Ghost, the Inspiration. It's all the self-same God. Jesus said, at that day, you'll know that I in the Father, the Father in me, and I in you, and you in me. It's God in us, coming virgin to a virgin body, virgin born, to make a way for the shedding of the blood, to reconcile many brethren back to himself. God represented in human flesh. Do you see it here? That was God in David, that was God in Joseph, that was God in Daniel. It was God within a measure. It was God in a measure. But when he came into Christ, he became in the fullness of his being. In him was a fullness of the Godhead bodily. All the Spirit of God dwells in him. 
speech like this now and as it goes out one will fast with the other one did you speak with the tongues or did you prophesy if you now there's where the people get these gifts all mixed up you see one will say because you don't do this you haven't got it or you don't do this you haven't got it now you are wrong on that god is like a great diamond listen so you can really understand this god is like a great diamond and each diamond has a chip of a diamond has chip places this big master diamond and late in the light great rays of light shines off from it and those are god's messengers gifts all of it comes back to the self same god the gift of healing the gift of preaching the gift of prophesying all the spiritual gifts of the body are just rays or reflections of reflections of the self same god see the big diamond for to one is given knowledge to another wisdom to another gifts of healing to another uh, gifts of prophecy but all by the self same spirit the great diamond and the big rays of light that we see shoot this way and shoot that way all declare one thing there's a god that lives and reigns amen and as long as you can see those things in operation know that god is still is the same message today and forever. If I go out, I used to preach at the Baptist church in, at Milton, Indiana, and I'd come home at night. There used to be an old nightingale set out there, and he would sing. And I noticed on a stormy night, he didn't sing as much as he did on a moonlight night. So I begin to study of the nightingale, and I come up to find out that he looks up towards the heavens, and he watches, and as long as he can see a star, he sings, because he knows somewhere the sun is shining. Oh my, what a lesson we could learn by that. And as long as you can see the Spirit of God operating through one of these little rays of light, there's a God that still lives and reigns. The nightingale would throw his head up and sing the top of his voice when he could see one star because he has to watch the star to sing by. And no wonder then it brings us joy. Oh, it's a well bubbling up. When I was a game warden in Indiana, I used to go to a certain place and drink. It was a spring, just bubble all the time. I thought it was the happiest spring I ever seen in my life. It was constantly bubble, bubble, bubble. So one day I sat by the side of that spring and I said, I'd like to speak to you, Mr. Spring. Every time that I come by here, you're so happy, jumping, bubbling, carrying on the way you do. I said, maybe it's because that the animal, the deer, comes by and drinks from you what makes you happy. No. If you could talk, he'd say no. I said, well, maybe it's because perhaps some other animal would drink. No, that isn't why I'm bubbling. Well, I say then, maybe it's because if you just bubble when I come by and you, that's what makes you bubble because I drink from you. He would say, no, that isn't why. I'd say, well, what makes you bubble, Mr. Spring? If you could speak back to me, he'd say, now, Mr. Branham, it isn't me bubbling. It's something behind me pushing me and making me bubble. So I think that's the way it is with a church that's born again of the Spirit of God. It isn't so much of the bubbling. It's something in there making it bubble, bubbling up to everlasting life, fountain of water of life, freshly coming every day from the inexhaustible fountain of life, which is Christ Jesus, who we are planted in him through the baptism of the Spirit. Amen. Now, we have the Spirit by these gifts, by portions, but Christ had it without measure. We have it by measure. To one is given knowledge, to another one is given wisdom. There are in the church five offices, apostles or missionaries, either one, both the same thing. Word means one cent. And apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors, God sets them in the church. But because one would be an apostle, the prophet couldn't say you are not in it, or the pastor to be the evangelist or so forth. But they are all little lines of God that's put into the church for the perfecting of the saints. And in every local body is 12 spirit, 9 spiritual gifts. In 1 Corinthians 12, 9 spiritual gifts in each body operate separately, but of the self, self, same, same self spirit, but now, but in Christ was a fullness. Now, if you see a man here prophesying, and another pastor, one evangelist, and another teacher, 
Now you can't say you are not in it because it's just one of them rays off of God. It all points right back to God, that big master diamond. Don't forget that. And now, if the Methodist is having a revival and they're getting souls saved and you're a Baptist, don't say that they haven't got any light over there because they are a light just the same as you are. See, it's all a light from God's big master diamond, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, working and getting souls saved and ready for the coming of the Lord now. Now, in Christ dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He had all the Spirit of God in him. I and my Father are one, said Jesus. That's the reason the people couldn't understand him. Sometime he'd say something, might look like he'd turn around and say something different. It was him speaking. Then the Father speaking, see, they were, and even the disciples could not understand him. And right at the last, they said, Lo, now speakest thou plainly. Now, we believe by this, if you know all things, no man needs to teach you. Jesus said, Do you now believe? After all that time, they couldn't get the why that sometimes he'd say this and then say that it was him and the Father speaking. Now, notice closely. Now, God, dwelling in Christ, used his voice to speak by. Jesus said in his miracle, Very, very, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what is his Father doing? And that doeth the Son likewise. Is that right? St. John 5.19. Then he did not do anything, nothing, within himself. No prophet ever did anything within himself until God, first God showed what to do. What a mistake Moses made when he went out with a vision of God and smote the Egyptian, and thought he'd liberate them with his hands because he thought he had a lot of faith and could do it because he was called for the job. No matter how much you are called for the job, God has to do the leading, see? He failed of all his schooling and his military mind and his training as a great Egyptian leader, but yet it failed because God had a program. And we have got to work according to God's program. No matter what we do, how smart we are, we got to humble ourselves and work according to God's program, amen? So he failed and God had to keep him another 40 years to educate him. So what it was, that he must forget himself, and it's not him, but it was God. Now, notice, many times people misunderstand now. I have to bring this in here to compare something in a comparison, and I hope you don't think it to be a carnal comparison, because I don't mean it of all the operation or something that I do or you do, but that it might increase your faith that Jesus raised from the dead and he's the same yesterday and forever and manifest himself in the same way here in his church that he did when he was here on earth. Oh, I hope you see it. Now look, in him dwelt the fullness. He was a diamond himself. Notice, when God wanted to use his gift, he spoke to the Lord Jesus in the time of Mary and Martha's trouble when Lazarus was going to get sick. Now remember, Jesus being questioned said, he did not do nothing till the Father showed him first what to do. Keep that now. That is God's eternal word. And if Jesus told something that wasn't so, then he wasn't Messiah. So that has to be settled the truth. When a man said not long ago he believed the devil could heal because what he could see, I said Jesus said he could not heal. So that settles it. If Satan cast out Satan, his kingdom is divided. So if Jesus said he can't heal, he can't heal, that settles it. You must believe God's eternal word regardless of what things look like. You believe the word anyhow. You don't look at circumstance. What if Abraham would have looked at the circumstance? Isaac would have never been born. But Abraham called those things which were not as though they were. And if we are the seed of Abraham, we have the same kind of faith towards God's promise. Those things as contrary to God's promise, we don't see them and ignore them. Amen? Brother, that's the faith that was once delivered to the saints. To believe God's word regardless of what circumstances, that has nothing to do with it. Abraham called those things, and as he got older, the promise looked like it was going. It was farther away and farther away. Abraham got stronger all the time, giving praise to God, more of a miracle. 
when he told him he was going to have a baby, I imagine he got the pins and the bird eye and everything ready. But when the first month came along, there was nothing doing. How are you feeling, Sarah? No different. He said, glory to God, we're going to have it anyhow. God said so. That settles it, sure. Second month passed. How are you feeling, Sarah? No different. Glory, we're going to have it anyhow. First year passed. No different. Hallelujah. We'll have it anyhow. Ten years passed. Glory to God, we're going to have it anyhow. He got older all the time. You, we claim to be Abraham's seed. But if God don't answer it just like that to you, well, I guess there's nothing to it. Abraham's seed, shame on you. Hold on to God's promises. Call anything else a lie. Keep God's promises. That's it. After he was a hundred years old, he still said, we're going to have it anyhow. And he did, sure, because it was God's promise. That's what Abraham's seed does. And if we, being dead in Christ, we take on Abraham's seed and are heirs according to the promise, then what kind of a spirit should be in you? I'm afraid, friends, as I talk to your pastor today, churches get the pastor's spirit instead of God's spirit. That's right. We don't need one another's spirit. There's no need of that. We need God's spirit. That's you go into a church and watch the way the pastor acts. Watch the congregation act the same way. That's the reason, you know, the Bible said, I give you a new spirit and then give you my spirit. And many people get that new spirit just to try to live right and do right and never get the Holy Spirit and try to act by it. And there's the way you get in trouble. That's right. The new spirit, it's a new life that has nothing that's good, but God has to give you a new spirit so you can get along with his spirit. The old spirit you had, you couldn't get along with yourself, let alone God's spirit. So he gives you a new spirit and you see people. That's the reason, friends, and I do as an evangelist, I try to stay in the word that you get the spirit of the word, not based upon some theology, but thus saith the Lord. I've got to answer yonder in the presence of all of you at the day of the judgment. You must take the spirit of God, that spirit of Abraham, the seed of Abraham, which is the Holy Spirit, we being done Christ, take on Abraham's seed and heirs according to promise. We have the same kind of faith that Abraham had and call everything contrary to God's word as though it was not. God made a promise. I accept it. That settles it. That's all. No matter how I feel, what it looks like, or anything else, God said so, and that settles it. There is the children of Abraham. That's the heirs according to the promise. Now, notice when Jesus was here on earth, he said, I do nothing till the Father showed me. He could look out over the audience, and when the Father would show him somebody, he could tell them, your blood issue, you touched my garment, the blood issue stopped. He could do those things. Someone would stand before him and come up to him and he'd say, well now, you're a good man, you're an honest man. How did you know me, Rabbi? Before Philip called you, when you were under the tree, I saw you praying. Same chapter. Come Peter, came up to him, he said, Why, your name is Simon, said the son of Jonah. He said, I'm going to name you, and I'm going to call you Peter. How did he know him? Where he come from, who he was, the father had showed him. He said, so everything he did, the father showed him. Now watch, when God was going to use his own gift, he knew where it was at. Christ was God's gift. Now I'm talking of Jesus, the body, the son. Now, when he wanted to use his own gift, he'd call him away from Lazarus. And they sent to, said, come over and pray for Lazarus. A people that had come out of the great Orthodox Church to follow what was so-called a fanatical holy roller. That's exactly what he was called. And all the early Christians was called heretics. That's crazy, see? So they were all called that. And they come out of the church to follow him. And he'd lived with them. And then when they sent for him to come pray for the loved ones that were sick to death, he refused to come. What would you do to your pastor? Oh, I'll go join the Methodist. That's what I'll do. If the Methodist does that, I'll go back to the Presbyterians. And that's the reason. If you've got a good man of God, 
and his God's servant stay with him. But if he isn't a servant of God, get rid of him. Get somebody that is. That's the only way to do it. And have faith in your pastor. That's true. Then you'll see the miracles of God happen if you've got faith in him. But he can only help you as you believe, as you have faith in him to believe. Now Lazarus was dying. They sent again. Jesus just moved on. Why? He knew what was going to happen. Then when the fulfilling, the fulfilling of days that the Father had showed him, which he said, I do nothing till he shows me. And then when he seen the days was accomplished, he turned and said to his disciples, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. Well, the thought was taken a rest. Said, Well, he does well. Said, He talked in their language. He said, He's dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there. Cause they would be persuading him to pray for him and do the very thing that God had told him not to do. See, God said, you wait now over here until he's dead. And in the grave four days, I'll come back and raise him up from the dead. And Jesus had to live and obey the father. Now, do you believe that? The Bible said he said he did nothing until the father showed him. And here's what he was going, see it? And he seemed then after the day was accomplished, he knew if he'd have stayed there, they'd have kept on saying, Oh, Jesus, you mean to say that you're going to let your body die like that? The doctors had stand him down. The historians said he did have hemorrhages of the lungs and so forth. So if he died, were you going to let your friend die? And you mean you didn't even pray for him? No, I ain't going to pray for him, see? He said, I'm glad for your sake that I wasn't there. But I go wake him, watch him, come into the grave. When he come up to the grave, he said, Father, I thank thee, thou hast had me already. But for these who stand by, I said, he knowed what was going to happen. Him and the Father had talked it over. He showed him because he said he did nothing till the Father showed him. He said, I pray just for the example. For these that stand by, I said it. Then he said, Lazarus, come forth. And a man that had been dead four days stood on his feet and lived again. Amen. A woman said to me not long ago, some year or two ago, she said, Reverend Branham, she said, you brag too much on Jesus. I said, oh, no, 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 I don't. She said, well, yes, you do. I said, you brag too much on Jesus. I said, you try to make him deity. I said, he was deity. She said, if I prove to you he wasn't nothing but a man by the Bible, will you believe it? I said, if the Bible said so. Well, she said, I'll prove it. She said, in St. John, the 11th chapter, when he went down to the grave of Lazarus, the Bible said he wept. Oh, I said, what's that got to do with it? Why, she said, he couldn't have been deity and cry. I said, you failed to see who he was. He was both God and man. That was a man weeping, but when he stood by the side of the grave, straightened his little figure up, he was the only man that could say, I am the resurrection and life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Said that to Martha, believest thou this? She said, Yea, Lord, I believe that you are the Son of God that was to come to the world. Think of that instance. She had a right to upbraid him. But when she heard now Martha had been kind of delatory, but she showed herself there what she was really made of. She ran right out to him, past all the critics, and she ran and fell down before him. Now, if it had been asked today, she'd say, Pastor, I want to tell you something. Why did you leave us in this kind of a ship? Now, my poor brothers laying out their dead bodies, see? That's the reason God can do nothing through educated people. No, so much, see? Oh, you got it all worked right. You know where everything should be. But Martha just knowed to run out to him. What? She fell down. Him, she said, Lord. That's what he was, Lord. Amen. I believe she read the Shunammite. Woman, when she went down to the prophet, she knew that God was in that prophet. If she could ever get to that prophet, she'd find out why her child died. That's what she said when she got to the prophet. He said, God did for me. I don't know what you are worried about, said. Is all well with thee and with the husband, with the child? The woman said, all is well. Amen. I like that. She came to the spot. Amen. Martha said, Lord, if thou would have been here, my brother would not have died. 
he said to the brother shall rise again she said yes lord i know he will rise again in the last day he was a good boy the jews believed in the general resurrection on the last day especially the pharisees she said i know he will rise in the last days he said i am the resurrection in life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live she said i know that whatever he's dead and buried he's rotting out there in the grave he's thinking now but said i know that even now whatever you ask god god will do it to you oh my something has to take place even now lord even now though he's dead though he's in the grave though he's thinking but i know that you just exactly what you said you was there's a penitent soul before the creator the wheels are coming together something has got to happen faith and the word is meeting even now lord whatever you ask god god will give it to you maybe you've been at the hospital maybe the doctor says you're going to die but even now lord can you speak to him he's sitting at the right hand of god making intercessions on your confession the doctor says i'm going to die but even now lord whatever you ask god god will give it to you you say they tell me i'll never see again i'm blind but even now lord whatever you ask god god will give it to you he's a high priest of your confession sitting at the right hand of god to make intercession on what you profess and you've got a right to profess any redemptive blessings that he's died for he was wounded for transgressions bruised for iniquity the chastisement of peace was upon him and with his stripes we were healed even now lord i don't care what the doctor says what the science says but even now lord whatever you ask god god will give it to you you believe it even now whatever you ask him he will do something's got to happen there was a heart full of faith and look at that beautiful girl with the tears running down her cheeks mixed up with her hair she said even now lord whatever you ask god god will give it to you I said where you buried him amen went down to the grave weeping that's right he was a man when he was crying but when he spoke to a man that had been dead for four days his soul was a four days journey i don't know where it was neither do you but wherever it was corruption knew its master and the soul knew its maker and a man had been dead for four days on his feet and lived again that was more than a man that was the divine god of heaven speaking through his son he was a man when he was he came down off the mountain hungry looking over a tree to find something to eat he was a man hungry but when he took five biscuits and two pieces of fish and five thousand that was more than a man that was god speaking through that man he was a master diamond he was a man who he laid out there on the ship that night with virtue out of him from healing and preaching through the day until the ten thousand devils of the sea swore they drown him and that little old ship like a bottle stopper out there on that sea the devil said we got him and the helm broke and the sails down and the oars gone and they woke him he was a man asleep but when he put his foot on the bill of the boat looked up and said peace be still and the waves and the winds and the waves obeyed him that was more than a man speaking that was god speaking out of his son he was dating when he died at calvary calling for mercy he was a man calling for help but on easter morning when the seals of death and the grave was broke he rose he proved he was god no wonder the people will say living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away rising he justified freely forever someday he is coming oh glorious day every man or woman has ever wanted to a hill of beans in this world has been men and women who has believed him to be deity certainly ask the poet ask the prophet ask abraham lincoln ask george washington ask old blind funny crosby what does he mean to you she said ask me not O gentle savior hear my humble cry while on others thou art calling do not pass me by thou the stream of all my comfort more than life to me 
whom have I on earth beside thee, or whom in heaven but thee? Amen. There he is, his deity. He was Emmanuel, God in the person of his son. God could use his gift. He didn't complain of being weak when God used his gift. But a little woman, right after that, right before that, she wanted to use God's gift. So she sits up and she said, I believe him to be deity. I believe he is what he says he is, the son of God. So she said, I've had this blood issue here for many years, about 18 years. I believe the scripture says, I'm not mistaken, on that 12 years. She had this blood issue for 12 years. The doctors had failed and the critics were standing by and the pastors and the deacons standing that morning and here come the little woman squeezing around. Here, you mean to tell me you're going to become a holy roller? Why? You go back up. She just brushed him aside. She had her heart set on meeting Jesus. So brushing aside everything that was contrary, she got to where he was. She touched his garment and turned around, walked back, just stopped, said, who touched me? He said, I don't know who touched you. Me? What was it? God hadn't shown him nothing. That's right. But the woman's faith had touched that gift. He said, but Peter rebuked him, saying, everybody's touching you. He said, but I got weak. Virtue went from me. Somebody touched me and looked around. Then where that weakness was coming from, a stream of current of spirit picked out the little woman where she was sitting, how real thy faith has saved thee. Now, to you people who don't believe in divine healing, the Greek word used there is sozo, saved, physically saved, just the same every time. It's translated the same thing, sozo, both physical and spiritual. She was saved from her blood issue. Thy faith has saved thee. What was it? The woman with her faith had contacted God through the Son of God and had drawn from the Son of God a desire that was a woman using God's gift on the platform of God solemnly gives a vision. Now, you said there that in that instance, he said that I got weak. But how much greater of a miracle was it when God used his gift? Here it is. It's like um, when we were boys, we used to go to the carnival or circus it was and say, for instance, I was a little taller than you, but there was a hole up here. We could peek through it. You couldn't see it, yet you were stronger than me. God makes us different ways. And maybe he could stand on my tiptoes and then grab a hold on the top of the fence and pull up real hard. And armor is just some questions now that you're asking, Brother Burnham, how is it that these things happen? How can you see to this one out here now? As a scripture, you know, Jesus did the same thing. It's not me, it's him. And if you didn't have the faith to reach and get it, it'll never happen. It's your faith. If you ever get anything from God, it'll never come through a preacher or a priest. It'll come through your individual faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ at Calvary. Divine healing isn't touching on a tartan pole or a boil or something or another. It's so in faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Certainly, it's Christ. It's all finished. It's your faith. God gives things after preaching his word, sending preachers. He put gifts. He is not willing that any should perish. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be healthy. He's died for that purpose and he wants you to see it and he does everything that there is even appearing himself to prove it to you and still people set back and say well it's mental telepathy it's mind reading it's of the devil and the jews said the same thing when they seen it done they said the woman at the well he told her sins or the sin that she was doing when he told philip down there that he saw nathaniel under the tree when he for he come over there the jews said his brother jesus said i'll forgive you but when the Holy Ghost is come and does that, you speak a word against that and it will never be forgiven you. Prophesying that the Holy Ghost could, would come, cause his raised from the dead and his here in the form of the Holy Ghost, the same Jesus. The things that I do, shall you do. I'll be with you even in you to the end of the world. God in you, your faith looks to him and his God gives and so forth in the church that contacts that. That's why they pack me from the platform sometimes. Not me, see, it's a physical part. It's a part that you do. 
God chose a gift and it just shows a place to go. Say, you right there and I'll go to Denver. You all read it in the paper. Mysterious things happen on the street. I was over there. That's what it was. See, nobody knew it but just told me to go over there. Many places. My followers and things know about it. He will tell me to go somewhere, stand on the street a certain time. There will be a certain thing happen. It will happen just exactly that way. Nobody knows where it comes from. Where? What about it? Nobody knows. I just go ahead and do what he tells me to do. Well, that don't bother me. But right here on the platform, just one vision will just take the life out of you. What is it? It's you. Look at Lazarus. He never said I got weak when I lays Lazarus, but when a woman touched his garment for blood issue, he got weak. When a man was raised from the dead after being dead for days and never got weak, what was the matter? God used his gift and a person using God's gift, that's what does it. That's the reason he could perceive it was her faith moving and just like here Jesus was, oh, all the water in the ocean, this gift is just a spoonful out of that. But if it's ocean water, the same chemicals will be in a spoonful that's in the whole ocean full. See what I mean? The same quality. What is it to do? To magnify some man of some church? No, sir. It's to magnify Jesus Christ. If it's given by any other from that, God will make you answer for it in the day of the judgment. I wouldn't say it takes a gift because yeah, without repentance, gifts and callings. But now notice, now, we are the carnival. Maybe I was, that's all of us here now. We are the carnival. And maybe none of you see visions. I don't know. Maybe you are, you'd be something else because you're all one big body. Here's a lot of pastors sitting here, good preachers. I can't preach. I wasn't called as a preacher. They can teach. I'm not a teacher, see? I taught a convention. Well, I may be in here, we have put it in a way you'll understand it. Here's one man standing here, is short, strong. That's what he is. He could lift up a big something and walk away with it. But I'm tall and skinny. I couldn't do it, see? But God made him that way for his work. He made him this way for this work. Now, we are trying to look behind the curtain of time. Well, perhaps I'd be the one to do it. Now, what will I do? I'll jump way up and grab a hole. And the little short fellow, he couldn't do that. And I couldn't lift his load. See what I mean? Maybe you preach. Maybe you're a pastor. Maybe you're a teacher. Maybe you're an evangelist. You don't see visions. I see vision. I'm none of them, see? But God has set in the church all these things for the perfecting of the body. Now, do you follow me? Now, I jump up all because I'm the tallest. I get a hold of it. Now, here's on the platform. I pull real hard. I look through the hole. What do you see, Brother Branham? A giraffe. Phew. My oh, wears me out. Oh, giraffes. Aha. Uh -huh. Do you see anything else, Brother Branham? Well, no. Look again. I jump away up. Grab a hold. Pull hard. What do you see? I see a camel. Phew. What else do you see, Brother Branham? Oh, my. See? Now that's what you're doing. You are pulling. You got a, here's a person on the platform. What is it? We're standing there. I'm yielding myself. The father just, see, I'm just yielding myself. And you are setting out there in the audience. And you're saying, God, let him speak to me. Let him speak to me. I know there's something wrong with me. I don't know what it is, but I know where my trouble is. If you will speak to me, I'll believe it. I'll believe that you are the same. If he knows me, then I know the man don't know me. And then I believe it's you. What's that doing it? Yes, the lady sitting here. She has a so-and-so. She was just praying for. See what I mean? But now that's in the meeting. But when whom? Here's two boys that's from the FBI outfits that come out of to follow me to see if that was right. These two boys sitting right here. That's right. Ask them what happened. Well, there's more vision at home than there is in the meetings. God gives me his gift then. But now, standing here, you use his gift. I just yield to it. And you are the one that uses it. See, I just yield myself to the Spirit. That's the reason that picture is taken. That's the reason it's hanging in Washington, D.C., in the hall 
of religious tonight. The only supernatural being that was ever scientifically proved to be taken. They've got a lot of bogus things, but there's a FBI documents of that, of George J. Lacey. He said the light struck the lens. It was there. That's all. And he's right here now. See? And now the only thing, when I know it's close, I just yield myself. And then you do, you pull. See what I mean? But now when God, say now God's going to use his gift. I take it back to the carnival. Then here come the ringmaster along. Say, what's the matter? I say, well, I was looking over the fence. Say, well, you're a pretty tall guy. I'll just lift you up. See then what he does? He lifts me right up with his hands like this and by the nape of the neck and says, you see, here's a carnival coming this way. And there's all the suckers and it's going to go through here and go out there, come back down. I'm not tired when it sets down. He showed me the whole thing, see? I'm not tired. He lifts me up. Then I come out of them kind of visions. It don't bother me. But when you go to pulling, you're pulling from the strength. See what I mean? Do you understand me now? Now, that's what the woman done. Reason he felt weak. The woman pulled from God. The things that she wanted from Christ. Now, quickly, we're going to write to the point. Gifts and callings set in the church are to magnify and to make our people ready. Now, I'm coming to my text. I went way around it, but just about five minutes now. And the text, now listen real closely. Now, God gave a gift in the time of Solomon. And Solomon had a gift of wisdom. He was smart by the wisdom of God, not of his own, but of God. He asked God for that, and God gave that to him. And if any gift of God will be recognized to be the truth, and everybody going around was finding out what this was, the talk coming about it, and oh, he read Second Chronicles, the ninth chapter, when you go home. And then way down in Sheba, the queen, a wonderful woman, listen close now, everybody perhaps come by was telling her, you should go up to Palestine, the great God of heaven. Now, she wasn't, she was a pagan. Well, the great God of heaven had blessed a man and gave him a gift. And his name is Solomon. You should see the power of his gift of the God of Israel. So many people telling her, you know, faith cometh by what? Hearing. Everybody come by. A traveler passed by through Sheba. Why? She'd, uh, why? She hear of it. Oh, we come to Palestine. It's great. God has given a great gift up there. It kept on till the queen said, you know what? I believe I'll go see for myself. There's the way to do it. Don't stand off and say, I don't believe it. See where her name is tonight, immortal. She saved by, but her actions what go towards God's gift. That's reason Martha got her brother, his soul, back to life. Her faith and actions towards God's gift. That was the way the woman got her blood issue healed. Her faith towards God's gift. And the queen of Sheba, she said, now, I may be wrong, but all this, if it's the truth, what I hear, it must be marvelous. So I'll go. Do you realize what that woman had to do? She was probably at least three months in the desert, a woman, not with an air-conditioned room, but sitting on a camel. Do you realize what a sacrifice? And tonight, we can hear of God's gift and won't walk across the street. No wonder she'll raise up and condemn this generation. But she wanted to know. It was worth more than life to her. Not only that, but she took riches and gifts to give it if it was so, now, this little woman set out with all these riches, spices, and talents of gold and everything to give to the cause of God. If it was so, she didn't know it was so. She just heard, so faith cometh by hearing. So, she goes to the meeting to find out. Look what she had to risk. In them days, them deserts was full of Ishmaelites and robbers. Why? They would tear that little gut down and take all that gold and stuff. But if you're really sick in God, God will see that you get there. See, there you are. If you're sincere, she was. She said, I want to see for myself. 
So here she goes on a little caravan, night after night, day after day, the toil on the desert, the moans of the camel, the complaints of the servants, the hot blistering sun, its hot direct rays of that Arabian sun down in there, in that sun in Africa will just burn you up. And she was riding along, a queen, all the writs, she didn't care how long it took her. She wanted to see for herself, oh, if people of the nations, when they hear that God has did anything, if they would just come in business here and see for yourself, you get it? Now, as she came, she come, she came to Solomon. She didn't come just to stay one night. She was going to see the thing through. That's the way to do it. Stay with it. She was going to test it and examine it. So it finally came her turn. And when she stood before Solomon, he revealed to her everything that was in her heart. How real God's gift always works right. Solomon told her the things that was in her heart according to the Bible. Told her every question that was in her heart. God working through his gift. And when the queen got ready to return, what did she say? When she gave all these gifts to Solomon, she said the thing that I heard about was right and even greater than I ever heard. She said, Blessed be the Lord God of Solomon, who has given him all this wisdom and these things. And Jesus, because she did that, being a pagan and calm, she was reconciled to God by seeing the gift of God work perfectly. Become a believer in God. She has said, you bunch of educated church going hypocrites. He said, she'll raise up in the day of judgment and condemn you. Because she came from the uttermost parts of the unknown world at that day to see there is no Solomon. And yet I said unto you that a greater than Solomon is here. And I say to you tonight, brother and sister, that in the days of judgment, the Queen of the Sheba shall condemn the United States of America. She'll condemn the so-called Christian world because God gave you something miraculous. And the so-called church goer will stand off on a side and because of personal praise of men or dignity of man-made, self-made things that they have, they'll criticize the Holy Spirit and the workings of the Holy Ghost and call it fanaticism and try to oust it out. And the very word before the Congress today is to stop such meetings as this. Here's the only thing I can say about it, and I say it as a son of God. I say this that it's nothing in the world but unadulterated jealousy. That's right. When Peter, James, and John had received power, Jesus gave them power to heal the sick, to cast out devils, to raise the dead. I can show you where God gave that part of the church. And you that don't believe in divine healing or miracles, show me where he took it away from the church. But when they received this, the church today isn't needing power. It's needing faith to operate what power it has. You have had so much embalming fluid pushed into you that the days of miracles is past. And some old cold morgue with the icicles, the spiritual icicles hanging down with 90 below zero. And somebody in there with some dead fluid to pump into you to be sure that you stay dead. It's become such a place till the Spirit of God has been grieved. And any church that denies the supernatural, it will die as sure as I'm standing in this pulpit. He that cometh of God must believe that he is and a read of those who diligently seek him. He is alive. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In every principle and power, live in Christ. When these disciples had received that power, look at it. It just lays in man. Oh, they thought they were dignified. And they go right out of a few days later and find themselves helpless before epileptic. They could not cast the devil out. And Jesus came along and he said to them, Oh, you faithless generation, how long will I suffer you? Bring him here, oh brother. When he came before that real jewel, he cast the devil out of him. And the disciples come to him. They said, Lord, did you take your power back? He never said, you don't have power. They said, why can't we do it? He never said, well, because you lost your power. He said, because of your unbelief. A few days later from that, they found a man casting out devils who wasn't a disciple. And the man was getting the job done. He was actually getting it done. He was casting out devils. He stood around here. Jesus said, whosoever will. He said, that's me. And away he went. He was getting the job done. That's right. And they were jealous because they couldn't do it. And they told Jesus, they said, we forbid him. 
he said, Don't forbid him, for he that's not with us scatters abroad. No man can do a miracle in my name, can speak light of me. And today is nothing but play childlike juvenile jealousy among the high churches that won't bring themselves down to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and to practice divine healing and the powers of the Holy Ghost among the churches. Amen. Exactly is true. Jesus Christ, God's Son, has raised from the dead. That's either the truth or the Bible is in error. I know that is the truth. He lives. He is not dead. And if he doesn't make himself the same as he was the days gone by, then he is not alive. For he promised the works that I do shall you also. Even more than this shall you do, for I go to my father. And the world has got the Bible, read the Bible, and said, You teachers produce it, will believe he raised until the Mohammedans. Just the same as the rest of them, Buddhas and the rest of them. But thanks be to God, Jesus lives. He's alive from the dead and it's not some fictitious makeup. It's not some man-made home theology. Those people that say that the days of miracles is past, their argument is thinner than the broth made out of a shadow of a chicken and stabbed to death. They haven't got a leg to stand on or a scripture to stand on. Any man that could preach anything against sin has to recognize sickness as the attributes of sin. Go to. Amen. I mean that from my heart. Uh, you can't deal with sin without dealing with its attributes. If a serpent had its, if a big animal had its paws in your side, you just don't have to cut off its power, just knock him in the head. It'll take care of the power. And when Christ died for sin, he knocked sickness in the head and everything that went with it, even death itself. And we are not dead, but we are alive. He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. Paul said, When he come to the grave, O death, where is your, thy sting? O grave, where is the victory? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Lord Jesus Christ. He lives. The world is hungering, but the pulpit is weak. We got the best doctors we ever had. We got the best hospital we ever had. We got the best drugs we ever practiced with, but we got more sickness than we ever had. Why? We got the worst pulpits, the weakest we ever had. Though we got the best churches and the best educated men we ever had, but we got the weakest churches that ever had. And we got more sin than the world ever knew of unbelief. What is sin but unbelief? He that believeth not is condemned already. That's right, there's your sin. Not smoking, drinking, that's attributes of unbelief. But you're a sinner because you don't believe. When Jesus questioned, said, when I come to the earth, he didn't say, will I find churches? Will I find sincerity? Will I find teachers? Will I be find teaching the Bible? Will I find doing this? He said, will I f find any faith? You got the power. You need faith. Personally, know where you are in Christ. Then yield yourself. Hallelujah. Don't think I'm crazy. If I am, leave me alone. I'm happier this way than I was the other way. That's right. I'm not crazy. I just feel I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know he liveth. Yes, oh, I can see him as he moves and walks. I know he's in the building right now. I know that his presence, two, wherever two or three are gathered together, I'll be in the midst. I don't believe my boy gave out any. I don't believe they gave out prayer cards today. I told him not to because I was going to preach. But I feel that the Holy Spirit is so close right at this time. I believe we'll pray for the sick anyhow. I believe we'll do it. I seen him come to the platform to ask me just a minute, to wait a minute. We don't need you up here with a prayer card. You stay where you are. You believe the mission that's been preached tonight and the message that's been preached and you'll see Jesus Christ move on the scene. Don't need prayer cards. When the anointing of the Holy Ghost is present, he's here to heal. He's there to give you whatever's given. That's right, listen. One time, when they was preaching, down under Jesus went going over on his road after the resurrection. Two people were going over on the road over to another place called Emmaus. And on the road over there, Jesus walked right out along 
the road and walked with them all to the day and they didn't recognize him is that right they didn't recognize him he talked with them and many of you people that went to church and jesus has helped you many times but you don't recognize it he's helped you he's blessed you he saved you from your trouble and you don't recognize it and then when he got them into one room where he could gather with them and shut the doors he done something just a little different from what a man could do when he did that thing like he did when he before he was crucified they recognized it to be the lord he ran away got out of their sight they ran back to jerusalem light-hearted and said truly the lord has risen if that's the same jesus who's here tonight maybe he will do something tonight like he did when he was here on earth if you could be the woman with the blood issue whatever you have if you can look and yield your spirit to him without any confusion no prayer card no way of getting up here but if you can yield yourself to him and i can yield myself to him and pray lord jesus knowing that i've got to meet these people in the judgment and stand here on your word that you have raised from the dead see if he didn't call you see if you can't speak just like you always spoke if you believe that's the only thing you can do is to have faith in god he said if thou canst believe now let us bow our heads just a moment i'm going to ask the organist if you will young lady i want you to just softly call the only believe while you have a prayer i want everybody real quiet now i don't know i'm just asking him if you've got a need now for god be just as relevant as you can and believe and if you will come tonight in this meeting after this message you've got to answer for this message you might not have had to answer it for it if you hadn't come to church tonight but yes you're going to answer for it now it's on your hands you'll either have to wash your hands of it like Pilate did or accept it now i spoke that's a man but i spoke of his word now he's god he will confirm his word let's just believe god now heavenly father thou knowest all things that your word might be fulfilled here's a strange audience i know none of them but thou does know them and you who could sit there by the side of the well the woman come to you you talked to her a few minutes and you told her said go get your husband she said i don't have any husband you said you got five she said i perceive that you're a prophet but we know that when the messiah cometh the messiah he will do these things he will show us these things and you said unto her i am he if that was a sign of the messiah then it's a sign of the messiah today that he's the same message to end forever we realize that lord when the staunch street jew come named nathaniel you told him who he was you told him where he come from he said rabbi thou the son of god you're the king of israel but then believe many of them were very religious said that spells bab he's a fortune teller and you said if you call the holy ghost that it will never be forgiven you in the world or in the world to come and you said those these things that i do shall you also you know where the fish that had the coin in its mouth you know where the two mules was standing hitched where two ways parted oh god you know just as the father showed you and you said the things that i do and in the same manner by the same god of course it will be done to the end of the world and yet a little while in the world the unbeliever will see me no more yet you shall see me for i pass upon an oh god you said i'll be with you to the end of the world i'll be in you doing the same works carrying on your ministry you said i am the vine here the branches now yield yourself and bear fruit and i'll purge you that you might bear more fruit and father i yield myself to thee now under the mighty hand of the holy ghost and as such will help me and bless me that i might show forth the resurrection to these people and that you will praise thee in christ name we ask it amen while you may raise your heads and i want you to be reverent and pray for i know that his presence is here now your audience you are from me the reason i say this away i've got to wait for him and then he anoints and if he strikes to you then i just ask that you have a desire for god in your heart if jesus christ has risen the dead and standing here in his power and you're out there in need like a woman was that touched his garment saying you now you say well brother branham can i come up and touch you no they're touching me that wouldn't be do no good but uh, you want to touch him 
how do you touch him? The Bible says that he's a high priest right now at the right hand of the Father, making intercessions. He's a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of infirmities. Is that right? If you have an infirmity, pray to him and ask him and find out if God won't give you the touch and let you touch him. If you just believe someone speaks in tongues, be reverent, be in prayer, you look, live, just pray. Now you're totally stranger to me. I know nothing of you. You know that, but now you just pray and say, God, in your heart like this, I don't know this man and he don't know me, but you know my desire and you know my heart and I want you to be merciful to me. And if you'll do that, I believe he will. I'm just yielding myself to see what he would say, to see what he would do, to see how he would do it. That's up to him. May he grant it is my prayer. Now I see the light of that's left here now. And he's standing over a lady, she's praying. And the lady sitting right back on her left hand side here. She has on a little white term. And she has a kind of a grey looking term. It is a grey looking suit and she's praying. She's sitting right behind a colored lady. She moved her body just then. She's wearing glasses. She has these spells. If that's right lady, raise up your hand. Right straight behind that, you right here you right there well you won't have it no more lady your faith touched him if thou canst believe that's a cause from the nervous trouble sister a shadow that was around you is gone now be reverent you are in the presence of him who is life here's a lady sitting here with a black hat on looking at me right here and he's standing over her she's got a check dress and she's wearing glasses and it's she's suffering with something wrong with her head it's a sinus trouble she has a nervous trouble do you believe and accept it believe that god will heal you and be made well do you with all your heart if you do you can have it be in prayer what do you think sir seem like you can't kind of see a man looking at me they're crying nervously watching that let me just talk to you a minute you sitting right there with a the blue suit on do you believe of your heart black-headed sitting next to the man with a beard on do you believe of your heart yes you i'm talking to maybe the microphone is not carrying my voice when the anointing strikes me i don't know why what i'm saying but you seem to be sincere and you keep moving around like i just like to you are right in line with me i just like to talk to you you believe me being his servant you do that with all of your heart you have a need of god that you like for god to do and you want me if i can reveal to you what you want would you believe with all of your heart and god will give it to you you would all right you look this away and don't look at your brother but look at christ and he will heal you of that rheumatism that you have wouldn't he you have rheumatism don't you yes sir and you have a uh, bracitis also don't you that's right that's right you've got someone else you're praying for too haven't you aha uh -huh, that's a wife she's in here but she's in an automobile accident and got hurt her legs and her body was hurt and she's all shook up that's that say the lord that's true isn't it raise up your hand if that's true you believe he's raised from the dead to heal you sir i couldn't see but it's him he is a healer I'm nothing. Don't be worried, little mother. Setting, I see your hand up like this. Don't get scared. And you with your hand like this, just believe. You know God can heal your heart trouble and make you well. Do you believe that? You do. You had a heart trouble, didn't you? The little lady, the blue dress on, has got her hair combed back. You had a nervous heart. Kind of a blocked heart. When you lay down at night time, it's fading. It's mothering you. Wasn't that right? If that's right, raise up your hand. All right. Now, you can go home and be made well. Your faith touches his garment. Are you believing with all of you? How many of these way believes somebody over in this section had to get to the balconies but just believe? I see a little girl sitting with her head down, sitting right here. Look up this way, honey. You're just a child. The little girl with like a pink looking blouse on. She's weeping because what ha happened? That light just moved down over her just then. It was standing near. Honey, have you got a prayer card? Now, you don't? Don't have no prayer card. All right. Then you'd never be called up here then. Anyhow, do you believe me to be God's prophet? Do you believe that Jesus has risen the dead? That's the mother of the child sitting by her. And do you believe it, lady? Will you, sister? Well, 
what you're here for tonight you're praying for your eyes that's right that is right is not right sure and let me tell you that you might know me being god's prophet you got a difficult at home that is your husband not he's not a saved man that's right isn't it lady he didn't even want you to come that's right i'm not reading your mind but just raising the dead amen he lives he reigns lady right behind you the colored lady there you have a stomach trouble don't you lady that's right you're not from this city you're from a place called albany you live on 80th street don't you your number is 80 and you live on the first street aha uh -huh. the lady next to you is your neighbor that's right she lives on 64 number 64 first street in albany she has a tumor doesn't she i mean mrs busby they're next to you you believe how do I know you? I don't know you. No more than Jesus and Lord Peter. But he knew who he was. All right, Martha. You can be healed too. If you believe you have your heart shocked you because I know you. It's not me that knows you. It's Heavenly Father that knows you. You believe now you have your heart. You accept your healing. Will you believe all over the building at this time is that the things that he did when he was here on earth, then it's him with you. It's him. Do you believe now? Then believe let us pray, our Heavenly Father, may all superstitions leave the people. That devil tries to keep them in darkness. And truly, you are designed to be the seed of Abraham. And I ask that you will go, send away this evil, or give me the spirit of power. Satan, I wish to speak to you. You see, you are exposed. Your time is nearly over. And all your condemnations are that day. I stand here as God's servant. You're not afraid of me, but you're afraid of, of him. But I represent in him, in his death, burial, and resurrection. These people represent him, and you got your demons all bound into these people, and you think you can hold them, but you are just a bluff. You are stripped of every privilege you have. You have no legal right. Jesus stripped you of every power you had at Calvary. And you are nothing but a bluff, and you ain't a bluffing us no longer. Jesus is here, and you are rebuked. The spirit, the spirit of doubt, come out of these people. In the name of Jesus Christ, leave these people and go to this building, and may every one of them be healed in Jesus Christ's name. If you're ever going to believe, you'll believe right now. Rise and be healed. Give God praise and glory and be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.